welcome to Easy Exposure. This is Oksana again with another tutorial and this time it will be a Photoshop tutorial. Today I will show you the tools which you can use to remove things from the pictures. And I also want to show you what I use instead of the mouse when I'm working in Photoshop. This is bamboo tablet made by a company called Wacom and um, this is a great tool. Honestly, I can't work with mouse no more. I always use this tool and it comes with a pen, so you kind of uh, move the pen around this tablet and the mouse is moving as, as well. So this is much better because you can be precise when you're working on your photos. And this is an older version of the tablet. Now they have a newer versions and they have this probably for three years and it's still working great. The only thing I had to replace was a pen. My pen broke. They also have them in the bigger sizes, but I wouldn't probably recommend the bigger size. This is a good size for retouching pictures. Uh, so let's get started. Let's go to Photoshop and uh, I will show you how to do some things, how to remove uh, things from your pictures. Let's get started. As you can see, I already have image open of my beautiful friend Olga, who got a title of Miss Russian LA, beauty pageant. And I took this photo in the studio with her beautiful crown and her ribbon and her beautiful dress. And as you can see, we have some box, soft boxes in the photo, which we're going to remove today as well. Before we get started, first of all, I want to make sure that I have all tools which I need and all the windows which I need. First of all, I will need a layers panel and you will need a layers panel pretty much for every Photoshop project. What are the layers? For those of you who don't know what layers are, layers are kind of like a pieces of glass stacked on top of each other and they have some drawings on them and of course the piece of glass which is on the top will be covering the piece of glass which is on the bottom and at the moment we have only one layer it's our main layer our background layer which uh, which have all this information all this image on it but we are not going to work on this layer this is our main layer and we don't want to destroy this layer. We are going to create a copy from this layer just in case we change our mind. If we do something to the image, we can always go back to this layer. That's why we are going to work on the copy of this layer. And uh, to create the copy of this layer, we just click on it and then drag it to the bottom to this icon, which kind of looks like a piece of paper. And now we have two layers. One is background layer and another one is background copy. We can always rename it if we want, just double click on it. But we're not going to do it right now. And this is the layer with which we are going to work. And make sure that this layer is highlighted. This is the layer which we see right now because it's on the top, it's our top layer. And make sure it's highlighted. So we are going to make changes to this layer. Also, I might need a history panel. And I don't have it open at the moment. But we can open it by going to Window. And here we have all our Photoshop panels we might need. And we choose History. And then we just drag it here. So. At the moment in the history, there is only one step. It's duplicate layers because we duplicated this layer. So it has been recorded in the history and history is useful. History panel is useful just in case we make some mistake and we want to undo a few steps. We can use history panel for that. Also, you will need to know how to enlarge your image because you might want to work on some details in the image and you need it. To be enlarged larger and to enlarge the image you can either change the percentage or you can also enlarge image which i usually do by clicking on the shortcuts on your keyboard and to make the image smaller is command minus and to make image larger is command plus 
and right now. Also, we want to maybe move image around and we can grab the hand tool right here. The tool which looks like hand and then we can drag the image around. Let's make it bigger. And as you can see here, we have some imperfection in the dress. And this imperfection we are going to remove right now. And there are several tools we could use for this. And we are going to talk about all those tools today. And let me just name them in real quick. Those are, first of all, spot healing brush tool and healing brush tool, which you can find one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tool from the bottom. And also in the same panel, there is a patch tool. So sometimes spot healing brush tool and healing brush tool can be hiding behind the spot, uh, patch tool. Those three um, tools can be good for remove, uh, for removing things. Also, uh, sometimes I use clone tool, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, tens from the bottom. And it's in this panel. So you can see clone tool. Or also, sometimes I use content aware fill, which you can find going to edit, fill, and then you get this window and you will choose. Oh, we don't have it now because we didn't highlight in any area, but if you will highlight the, some area, you will have the content aware choice right here. So those all tools we could possibly use for things like this. And in some situations, some of them uh, work better than others. So let me show you how they work. Let's go to the spot healing brush tool first. And spot healing brush tool and healing brush tool are kind of similar. They both are healing brushes. But what is the difference between spot healing brush and healing brush? The difference between spot healing brush and healing brush is that spot healing brush is sampling information around the spot you are about to heal, around this area. But the healing brush tool will let you to choose the target where you would like to collect your information from. Like right here, you can I, uh, when I click on my option button, see the target shows up and I can collect my information to heal the spot. So let's try spot healing brush tool first. And you can change the size of the brush right here. You can change the hardness space and you can play with those settings. But usually default settings work kind of okay. Um, also I use it no in the normal mode to heal the spot. Sometimes you will need those other modes, but we're not going to talk about them today. In this situation, normal mode should work just fine. And also make sure that content aware is checked right here. So also you can change the size of the brush by clicking on left and right bracket on your keyboard. So you have to match, you don't want to heal the spot with a huge brush like this. You want to kind of have a nice small brush, which goes just over that area. And we just drag this and see it did pretty good job. And let's try in the same situation, let's undo, we just go to our history panel and go step back. And let's try our healing brush tool which lets us to sample the area from which we are going to he, uh, to he, um, sample the information to heal. So click the option button, then click on the area which you want to sample it from, and then we go over it. As you can see, it's kind of like covering. And sometimes you need to sample it a few times, see which area which is more similar to the area you are healing. As you can see, it works too, but sometimes it's a longer process. But in some situations, this is the better way to go. It all depends. But in this situation, Spot Healing Brush did a pretty good job. So try out those two tools and see which one works better. 
also let's try to heal some different and also i kind of like to use spot healing brush mostly on the things which are small like this it's good for some pimples stuff like this maybe some hair as you can see it does pretty good job on it but let's try to heal something bigger like this letters for example let's make her Miss Russia instead of Miss Russian LA. Sorry, Olga, I'm gonna change your title. So, we just take our healing brush, make it bigger so it covers the letters. And as you can see, it did a job. You made Olga Miss. Let's see, let's remove N. Miss, oh, see, sometimes it does this because it's sampled from the A, because A was really close to it, so sometimes we need to go over it again. And now she is Miss Russia. So let's move on to the next tool I would like to show you. And the next tool is a patch tool. And I think patch tool is also good to... Um, change the bigger areas maybe sometimes it might be faster than spot healing brush tool it all depends on the situation sometimes i go between uh, the tools and see which one works better and the way how the patch tool works from the name you can already guess it's kind of like a patch in the area and with a patch tool you have to have area with which you want to patch the area you want to patch <laughs> That's a little play of words. Uh, so let's make her Miss US, for example. We need to remove a couple of letters. And with the patch tool, we have to circle around the area we would like to patch. And then release. And then we just drag it right here. We have so obviously, as you can see, we need to have an area with which we are patching, and sometimes you need to go a few times. Okay, let's remove S and let's remove R, and now she's just Miss US. We just completely changed her title. And sometimes we get some imperfections which we need to improve, maybe patch a little more. But I'm not gonna concentrate on it. I'm not gonna go into make it all perfect. You have to. It all depends on your image. Sometimes you need to go over it a few more times, and sometimes you see some tool does a better job than other. But I think it did kind of pretty good job. Okay, let's zoom out. And there is some other things we still need to fix, those soft boxes. And let, let's see if the patch tool will do the job. Let's just try. We just circle those soft boxes. Just do. And then we drag it maybe down. And sometimes it takes a little while, depends on the size of the picture. And as you can see, a patch tool didn't do good of a job. And the reason for that is because patch tool works better when we can circle around the area and there is um, things to sample around the area. But right here, it was on the edge of the photo and it didn't sample it right. So there is other tool which probably I think is the best for the job like this if you have stuff um, on the edge of the picture. So let's back up in our history and let's still highlight the area. But we can highlight it either with a patch tool or there is also a um, square tool which with which we can use to highlight the square things or there is a lasso tool which also helps us to highlight things. So whenever we highlighted the area which we want to change, we go to Edit, Fill, and as you can see, now we have this option which called Content Aware. Click on Content Aware and click 
okay and sometimes it might take a while depending on the size of your image this photo was taken by my Nikon D800 which has a gigantic files to process so sometimes I need to wait and my computer is not the slowest but it did a job and as you can see it did much better job just pretty much flawless job much better job than um, the patch tool let me back up again uh, because I want to show you what else this tool is good for this tool is good, uh, also good because sometimes you can um, remove things from a few areas. For example, I'm uh, a few areas at the time. For example, I'm circling this area, and then I can hold Shift on my keyboard, and I can circle this area, and then. We can go to image, uh, I'm sorry, to edit, fill, content aware, we chose, right? And click OK. And now we're going to wait a while. And as you can see, the boxes from the both sides were removed at the same time so in some situations this tool might be so much faster if you have few things removed to be removed you can use that tool that was pretty easy fix huh um, and now let's take a look what changes we made to the image and to take a look what changes we made to the image remember we can go to our layers and we have the top layer to which we made a change so we have bottom layer which wasn't untouched which was untouched so we can hide the bot at the top layer by clicking on this eye icon and when we hide a top layer the bottom layer will be revealed and there were there was no changes made to that layer and we can click and click and then we see the difference so now let's create another layer, just duplicate it. And we will make some more changes to that top layer. And you can either do it or no, but I like to create new layers uh, when I do a different, for example, if I'm already happy with this and I don't wanna make changes to whatever I've done, I just cr um, create a new layer and keep on uh, doing a new changes but I will still have if I mess up with whatever I I'm doing right now I can always delete this layer and go back to the previous layer so um, to remove letters from her ribbon uh, it was kind of easy there was just a whole bunch of white space around and here it was kind of the plain background but let's try to do something which is a little bit more elaborate and more difficult to do for example let me zoom. Let's remove her crown. I don't know if she would like it that much, but let's just try for the learning purposes. And this is not that easy to do to remove her crown. Why it's not? Because we have all those transitions. We have the plain background right here. We have her hair, which has a lot of different texture. So let's take a look if a computer can do it easily by himself. Let's try spot healing brush let's see what happens huh not that great huh uh, how about patch tool oh I forgot to you but anyway I didn't drag it far enough so we still have this left but anyway it doesn't work Uh, maybe content aware feel let's see how smart computer can be let's see and still the same situation our Photoshop is not that smart to do this replacement I mean it's very smart to do other things but not stuff like that yet maybe in CSS 20 uh, the Photoshop will be able to do this but at the moment 
you can't do it automatically so this is the case where the tool called clone stamp tool comes handy and this is a uh, tool number nine from the top called clone stamp tool so let's give the uh, clone stamp tool a try and to sample the area you have to click option on your keyboard and as you can see the arrow will show up kind of like a target um, target symbol will show up and you can click in the area which you think is appropriate to sample from like for example we just click anywhere in the background and then we put our cursor over the area we want to paint and we will be painting with this in here and as you can see this is pretty easy because we have a plain uh, gray background so this part is easy and also you can change your brush size and remember on your keyboard it's a brackets left or right bracket to change your brush, brush size and you can also change the hardness of the brush and I will show you the difference let's make our brush soft which is zero and when you paint as you can see the edge where you paint is kind of soft but when we put our brush all the way to 100 which is hard brush when you paint the edge is kind of harsh and in most situations when you're doing a job like this you probably want to bring your hardness down to make a transition softer and more natural and the bigger the brush size the softer it is and the smaller the brush size a little bit less soft it is so we're just painting over right here and this gray part is easy but we have that part with the hair coming up which is not that easy so let's finish this right here and right here and here we have a lot going on with the hair so you have to really think where it's better to sample from and I'm not going to do it perfect right now because I want to do it as quick as possible just to show you but I would probably spend much more time on this image than I will do now and sometimes you just choose a bad area to sample from like for example if we choose area from here and paint in here this doesn't fit at all and you can undo it by clicking command Z and command Z with command Z you can undo one step and when you're working on the stuff like this it's really handy because if you example painted and you doesn't like it you can always undo it with command Z and the more you use those tools the better you get and the better you know which tool fits in which scenery in what for example when you use this tool you will know better the more you practice how to sample and which will work the best see here see here I have a little bit of repetition when I was sampling so I want to paint something more natural right here sometimes you want to make a shorter stroke sometimes longer depends what what will work better see like here transition is not really well sometimes you can also change opacity and that helps right here you can change the opacity right here and I can make this area a little darker and blend a little better it's so all depends so this is just an example and if I would work on this image longer um, as you can see you have some flyaway hair here and I would probably add them right here and make sure that this transition right here is more smooth Let's see just add little bit smoother transition so this is just I wanted to show you real quick I would probably work much longer on this image and think more carefully when I'm going to sample but this is only to show you which tools you can use to remove things from your image so let's see the difference 
here is our layer with a crown and when we undo this layer let me just show you the whole thing so for example uh, this layer the top layer we were removing the crown when we click on the eye the layer beneath is revealed when we click on the eye on the layer beneath this is showing up because the la the all the layer which is all the way on the bottom is revealed our main layer um, where our original image is and then when we click on the eye this has disappeared our soft box has disappeared and our letters and then our crown disappeared so that's it for today this is the tools i wanted to show you i hope you enjoyed the video and you learned some new tricks in photoshop and now you can go and work on your pictures and i hope you noticed my cool new t-shirt i got from ucgym.com website which the full name is under construction gym and this is a new social network for fitness lovers yes I love fitness I love to work out I go to the gym almost every day and now I'm getting ready for summer so I am a member of this new social network so if you want to see some pictures of me when I'm working out and maybe I'll post some videos as well and follow me and Work out together with me and share your photos and your workout routine. So join this website and add me as a friend. My um, username is Oxanart. So you can find me there. I see you next time. Bye-bye.